I have an easy one for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is your plan to ensure the workforce for Westchester County? I'm sorry. Um, say it again. What is your plan for the short uh, diverse workforce for Westchester County? Okay, good. So, for a more, you're talking about county, yeah. county workforce. Yeah. The question was, how do we create a more diverse county um, workforce, county employees? And we have worked with our. African American Advisory Board, we have worked with our Hispanic Advisory Board, we have worked with our Asian American Advisory Board. More specifically though, we've worked with the United Black Clergy and other leaders to let everyone understand how, for the most part, you get a government job. There are civil service rules, and so if you haven't taken a test, and if you don't qualify, in other words, do well enough on the test to be high enough on the list, for a particular job, then you can't by law be chosen. So the challenge for us was, how do we get a bigger pool of applicants, especially in the minority community, for areas like law enforcement mm -hmm. that should reflect the diversity of the communities? And so we have worked over the last several years in getting the word out. Uh, we've done direct outreach in places like Mount Vernon and in Yonkers and other areas to have people understand what a career in law enforcement specifically would be and to get people to take the test because if they don't take the test you cannot be hired and so once you take the test and you finish high enough then we can actually pick a more diverse department or have a greater pool so that's always a challenge but we've been doing direct outreach we also have programs through our office of economic development uh, where we can have um, access to capital for small businesses. We have a minority and uh, women business enterprise, which is aggressively doing outreach. And a lot of this is just figuring out how to get through the red tape. And so part of that is educating people on how to actually qualify for contracts through construction and other things. So it's been a lot of education, but we've seen progress and that's important, but we'll keep doing it. increasing taxes to pay for everything way beyond our means, but draining the reserve every year to the point where it became right at or below what the ratings agencies permit. So we were in danger, dangerous territory, okay? Very dangerous territory. And we were not going to borrow. We were not going to borrow. We were going to stop that practice. So the goalposts that we set up, if we were not going to increase taxes, we needed to hold firm on the reserves and start as best we could building that back up a little bit, which we've done not as much as I wanted to, but we've been able to build it back a little bit. Now, I think the question that you're asking happens to be on the tax certiorities, because that's the whole issue that some have been saying during the last budget. The tax certiorities is when your property, when you think you're paying too much taxes on your property, when it's overvalued. And so you can grieve your property, just like everyone has the right to do. And if your property value, 
your assessed value is lowered, then you pay less taxes, okay? We, the school districts, the towns and villages and cities and the county have to refund that which are court settlements or which people, if they get refunds. So there was about $10 million or so that we would put in the operating expenses every year for those kind of refunds. Now, in this budget, we had choices to make. Either keep that $10 million in there and make cuts elsewhere, which, by the way, the other side was not willing to do. We had an array of opportunities, and they said, we don't want to cut anywhere. Okay, if you're not going to cut there, then you've got to figure out, without raising taxes, where that money's going to come from. Now, one solution, which others do, because we are the highest taxed county in America. And as the highest taxed county in America, I hear, you know, it may not be the case for some of you in this room, but I will tell you this. Just about every senior center I go to, or when I go shopping at ShopRite, people stop me, and it's, do not raise my taxes. I can't afford it. You have people, now you might not be in this case, and God bless you, but look. You could do a luxury tax. You can pay it. All right, I will say this. All right. I will, I will say this. You cannot do. You can, hold on. I will ask you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Listen. Listen. Let's listen. We have to find. We always, always have to find the right balance between the things that we have to do and want to do versus what we can afford to do. And there are a lot of people in this county, a lot, who are, are just making ends meet, who cannot afford a tax increase. Some of you might think. $100 extra a year or $200 is, is meaningless. If you do think that and you want to voluntarily write an additional check, you'll take it. But otherwise, there are a lot of people who can't afford that. So, 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 the, so the issue was, the issue was what to do with the $10 million. We could either keep it in the budget and do that from a fund, or we could basically borrow it at an extraordinarily low interest rate. I mean, it's like $100,000, or even, no, it's $40,000, I think, um, for that over the course of the year. And that would allow us to keep daycare as it was, to keep bus routes as they are, and to keep the essential services. That's a choice that the legislature has to make. And quite frankly, there was split decisions on that. And so we had to come to an agreement in some respect and in a bipartisan way, that was the decision. Now, I've always said to those Democrats who said, no, we, we don't want to borrow. They did. 12 people did vote. 12 out of the 17 voted to do that. But for those who didn't, then offer a solution. You can't sit there and say, no, 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 no. You've got to offer the solution. And basically, there was broad consensus that we weren't going to raise taxes. But you can't sit there and say, no, 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 without offering a solution. So that was a very painless solution that allowed us to keep essential services. We, we, we pay it each year. We pay that. We pay that on an ongoing basis, yeah. And it's not a lot of money. If, if it was a lot of money in interest, we wouldn't have done that. Next question. All right. Before we get to Howard, um, Susan Van Dolsen. All right, Susan, you're going to go after Howard. Okay, uh, yes. my question is about it. It seems to me that uh, Governor Cuomo has come up with, I think, is a real no-brainer when it comes to getting a lot of kids into college, making them productive citizens, and thereby increasing the economy by saying that they should make state colleges free for every family that earns Every family that makes less than $125,000 a year. I think all in all, when you do the balance on it, I don't see how you can come out wrong with getting a lot more kids graduating college. Okay. So. I 
I agree with you. The basic premise of that is that college is extraordinarily expensive and unaffordable for a lot of people. And my wife and I are at the stage right now where our oldest, who's just starting high school next year, we're only four years away from our first college bill, and that scares the hell out of us because I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, we have a 529 account. We have a 529 account which we put money into, but we have three kids, and we understand that it is extraordinarily expensive. The proposal by the governor was not thought out, nor did we have any discussion on a fundamental, major, fundamental shift that will be extraordinarily expensive. Nothing is free, we know that. So what you had said is Bravo. that, and by the way, I think the goal of getting kids to college, if that's what they choose, if that is what their path is, because there are other options to just going to college. You need skills, you need trades, military, all those various options are there for people. But let me go through the free college tuition for a second, okay? The free college tuition will take the balance that we have now, take away choice for some, and will also very much so hurt our private institutions. And when you have people go to, listen up, listen up. When you have people go, when you have people go for free, somebody is paying for that. Now let me tell you who's paying for that, okay? You are paying for that. And here's what, here's what. Let me tell you, if you have, let's take the $125,000 per family, right? That's the, that's, it starts at $100,000, I think it goes to one twenty-five dollars in a year or two. If you are making $124,999 as a family income, your kids, if they go to a SUNY school, are getting free tuition, allegedly. Okay, the gap between what they would qualify for in, in grants, and, and et cetera, and that gap would be made up by the state. Your neighbor, who's making $125,001, is paying for their neighbor's kids, their kids. And by the way, property taxes have to pay for this because in the case of Westchester Community College, $30 million is a threesome. It's the state, it is the school and through tuition, and it is the county. So th listen, $30 million goes from the county tax levy to pay for our share of WCC. Now, let us say, because the projections are, there will be a 31% increase in the student population at WCC. On balance, that's a good thing, right? More kids are going to school. The cost for that is 31% more professors who have to be paid for, buildings that have to be built, and all of those things. Yes, yeah, the jobs. But well, you have to pay for it. And that pay comes out of the county tax revenue. So I want everyone to understand that as we learned when we were kids, nothing is free. Okay? That's what it is. Huh? Okay. Someone said, what did you say? Just send them to jail? That is, that is an irresponsible comment. People who go to college, if they choose to go to college, and college is a good thing, and it's a, it's a personal decision that each family needs to make. I had to take out, I had to take out loans. I had to take out a lot of loans, okay? And my parents had to pay. No, it's not so sorry. It's, I had to pay those loans back. And I think there is nothing wrong, by the way, with everyone having a little skin in their own game because yeah, it's right. bad. Yeah. people to understand is, if you think college is free now, wait to see how free it is later on when everyone's paying the bills. I want people to be able to go to college, of course I do, if that's their choice. But please, please, don't put the blinders on and say it's not going to cost anything. It's going to cost a lot of money. And the taxpayers, the middle class taxpayers who always get it, are going to end up putting the bill for this one. Too. Sheila Commons? Sheila?